Hey guys, how are you today? It's Mo from Programmer Tube. Today I want to show you how to implement Sterling in C, C++. So if you're asked in an interview, how do you get the string length in C, C++ without using a library built in function? So today we're going to see how to do that ourselves. All right, so the first thing we want to do is launch Visual Studio and if you don't have Visual Studio make sure you install download and install Visual Studio 2015 the community free edition so once you have Visual Studio up and running on the screen go to file menu click on new and we're going to create a new project and it's going to be a C++ console app and let's name this app strlin okay hit ok and then on the wizard click next and you can leave everything as is and hit finish button so this will create the generic uh, just the console app as you can see here i'm going to take this comment out we have integer main so typically in the interview you might be given the function prototype or maybe the interviewer will ask you to actually do it yourself but this is a very simple function we know that we want to return an integer and let's just use capital letter here string length so you want to pass in a pointer to a string the best way to do this is to use a const char pointer because you want to also get the length of a string that is constant right so that's why we say const char pointer which is more generic than just char pointer and then we say p string so the question here is should we actually return integer or unsigned int we're never going to be returning a value less than zero so might as well make this unsigned end okay so as usual the first thing you want to do is always check your input parameters right if somebody passes you in a null you need to make sure your code doesn't crash so if null is p string in this case we can return zero otherwise we're gonna have to define a counter count equals zero and then while while we're not at the null character i'm gonna simplify this code further a bit more so let's say now plus plus count plus plus p string move to the next character so this is or we just need to fix this typo here that didn't fix it now that's fixed okay and then return count this is just simply how string length is implemented of course we can just make this code look a little bit more elegant but let's see that in a minute so how do we test this so we're gonna compare our function against the built-in library function to make sure we actually are doing the right thing so here we're gonna define a char str let's say 100 equals hello strlin okay so what we want to do is print f we use the library built-in function for our string and gonna pass in this string as well as its length so this is right now the squiggly red line is because i haven't included the string function so i should here say include string the edge okay and then semicolon at the end so let's copy this line paste it here and then this time we're gonna use our strlin function right so here we're gonna use our strlin function compare the two together make sure we don't have any bugs any issues in the code so to run this hit ctrl f5 on the keyboard as you can see here, the built-in library function is returning 13. Ours is also returning 13. This is good. So that means our implementation is correct. Another test may be always try to test like some edge cases. Let's try an empty string, control F5 and see how that goes. All right. So as you can see here, both functions are returning zero. That's good. The next one that we want to want to try is maybe a single character string and do that. As you can see, both are returning one. So this is working. All right, so this is basically it. This is how you implement string length. Now, if you want to be fancy and try to optimize the code further, I think here one thing we can do is we can combine this together because we can check for the content of the pointer that this only returns false if we hit the null character, right? Because null is zero. So as long as we're not at the null character, we'll continue the, the while loop. And then plus plus. Uh, attached to the string pointer not to the content we're not actually so the precedence here goes to the pointer so this actually checks for the content of the pointer and then increment the pointer so that means we can reduce this a little bit here let's give it a try let's say here let's compile and run okay so both are returning actually 12 the same value that's good this is more compact code but it's, it doesn't actually impact performance on anything it's just uh, you know you can do it this way if you want to be fancy 
another way to do it if you want to do it with for loop right how do we do this with a for loop not a while loop okay so we can get rid of this and say there's so many ways we can do it in for loop but one of which is we're going to use the count equals zero so in it let's let's do the first this one count equals zero as long as contents of p string is not null and say count plus plus then here p string plus plus this is one way to do it okay let's test this one return 12 right we both now still returning the same value that's good what other forms of for loop can we use in here well i can get rid of this and gain combined here with this one so let's put the plus plus here get rid of this so now we have this way this this way oh well actually the compiler will complain you have to have a semicolon for the for loop so we can put a comment here saying that just to make sure that this is needed because otherwise without the semicolon it's um you know the compiler will complain you can put the semicolon here i don't recommend that it might cause you in the future if you want to add some statements here you might be scratching your head what's going on so it's better to just put it on a next line like this control f5 is still showing 12 that's good all right so the last thing that i'm thinking of here which is we can even put the initial value here and just take it out of the loop if you take it out of the for loop you need to keep the semicolon this way so this is another form of doing it and let's test it again as you can see here it's the same effect nothing has changed so as you can see this is how you implement string length yourself without having to use the built-in function if you like the video please leave a comment like or subscribe and i'll see you in a future video thanks for watching